Hello everyone, welcome back to Random Tech. So today, on my drive home from school, I found this Sony TV on the side of the road. I believe it's a 50 inch. And uh, of course, it has a few issues, otherwise it wouldn't have been on the road. Let me turn it on real quick. Let's see here. As you can see, the screen is just completely cracked. There's actually an impact point right here. And uh, when I found this TV, there are actually footprints on the screen, so it's probably worse than it was when I threw it out. But other than that, it appears to work. It's supposed to be displaying this image right now, and you can kind of see it. It's the red and the green and some other parts of the test pattern. And if I go back to a desktop, let's see. You can actually see the taskbar along the bottom of the screen, so it appears that all the circuitry inside is working, despite that huge crack. And uh, I picked it up because I thought I might be able to salvage some parts from it, maybe make a little money selling them on eBay. And uh, it's got the stand, which is always nice with TVs like this. It might sell for at least $20, I'll see in a little bit when I look on eBay, but yeah, so this video I'm just going to show you what parts I'm going to take from this TV, what they might be worth, and just how to test them and stuff like that. So stay tuned and I will get this on the bench so we can take it apart. Alright, so I've got the TV laying face down on a desk. And let's start with the first part we can salvage, and that is the stand. So what a lot of people do is they buy a TV, they wall mount it and then they throw the stand away and then later when they want to sell it or move it somewhere else they have to buy a new one because of that these stands can actually be pretty valuable so I've already removed the two screws that were holding it in but make sure you keep the stand and set that aside and keep the screws as well because you'll need those if you ever want to use it again so with the stand out of the way Let's begin taking the TV apart. So, typically, along the perimeter of the TV, there are going to be a bunch of little screws. We want to take all those out. And then, on this one at least, there were some screws over here next to the vase mount. There's also a screw right here next to the inputs. Now, of course, this will be different for every TV. But generally, if you see a screw, take it out. And just make sure you're not missing any on this TV. There's some screws in there that I didn't see at first, but just try to find all the screws and remove them. And then, after that's done, we can take off the back cover. Alright, now I'm going to take off the back cover. I know that this isn't entirely in frame with the camera, but this will only take a second. Again, because the screen's broken, we don't have to be careful, so I'm just going to take a flathead screwdriver get that real quick. Alright, and I'm just going to pry up. Oh wow, it's coming off easier than I thought. Um, just for the record, I have already taken this TV apart and removed everything, but I did not like the footage from that, so I put it back together and uh, this is take two. Uh, there we go. So now we can see the innards. Now the cable management isn't as nice as it was when I first took this TV apart. Like I said, I put this all back, but basically we have the power supply, LED driver, the main board, the T-Con board, and then a few other items we want to take, like the speakers, the little board right here with the buttons on it, there's also an IR receiver down there for the remote. But uh, let me set the camera up and I'll take a more in-depth look at all of these parts. Alright, let's start with the power supply. So, this is pretty self-explanatory. The mains voltage comes in, then the power supply converts it into voltages that the rest of the TV can use. And normally there's a little legend that shows you what the voltages are. So it looks like on this one we have 
uh, let's see, 12 volts running to the main board and 25 volts running to the LED driver. Now with the main or with the power supply you want to be careful because there's this giant capacitor right here and that could have a lot of power stored in it especially if you've just tested the TV like I have. So just try not to touch anything on this board, at least not in this area. So just remember, don't touch anything in this area. So let's just go ahead and remove these cables. So these are just plastic connectors with a little tab on top. You press that in, you can just pull the cable right out. I'm going to do it on this one as well. Let's see here. That was in there pretty good. There we go. So, yep, I'm going to set those aside. And let's go ahead and unscrew this. Alright, with all the screws taken out, you just pull the power supply out, give you a little look at it, I'm going to go set this aside. Alright, up next we have the LED driver. So what this does is it takes the voltage from the power supply. In our case it was around 24 volts, if I remember correctly. It also takes a PWM signal, or pulse width modulation for adjusting the backlight brightness. Um, there's another cable for turning the backlight on and off. There's one that reports errors if there's something wrong with the backlight. And it'll send that to the main board. So let's go ahead and remove this connector up here. This connects directly to the backlight. You can't see it right now because it's inside the panel. But for this one, there's a little plastic tab that lifts up. And this cable just pulls right out. Now like I said earlier, a lot of newer TVs, LED TVs, don't actually have a separate driver board. It's built into the power supply, so your TV may or may not have one of these. In addition, if you're opening a very old TV and it uses a CCFL backlight, it will have an inverter board instead running along the side of the screen. I'll probably show one of those later in the video, but for now, Let's just take this driver board out. There we go. Okay. I'm going to set this aside. And let's move on to the main board. Alright, so taking a look at the main board here. Let's start from the top. We have the power, well actually I should explain what it does first. So this is basically the brains of the entire TV. So of course we have all our inputs here. We have HDMI, USB, more HDMI inputs, the tuner. Um, there's actually a Wi-Fi card on here that I've already disconnected the antenna from. That's because I believe this was a smart TV. There's also Ethernet, so yeah, it's probably a smart TV. Um, so yeah, this controls the smart functions the inputs, it generates the image that it sends to the panel with these wires here. It also controls like stuff like color calibration and all that. So up here we have our power coming from the power supply. These connectors have been giving me trouble. There we go. I think this is for the speakers. We have left and right speakers. Down here, this is for the IR, it says right there, IR. That's the receiver for the remote control. This cable runs to the buttons on the side of the TV. Just remove that. And then up here are the cables that run to the TCON board. Let me see if I can zoom in on those. That's a little better. Anyway, we want to be very careful with these cables. I believe that 
on these connectors, the back lifts up like that. And then they just slide right out. Again, try to pull them out evenly so you're not like jamming any crooked or anything. Get the other one. All right, looks like we've moved all the cables. Give me a moment here. This camera tripod is very stiff. It's hard to adjust. All right, that's good enough. So uh, let's go ahead and pull this board out real quick. set this aside. And last but not least we have the T-Con board. Here we have the T-Con board. What this does is it takes the signals coming from the main board and then converts them into something that the panel can use. Because right here you can't see it right now because the shielding's on, but it connects directly to the panel. I don't actually know what the T-Con board does aside from that. I think these are LVDS cables, and they carry an LVDS signal, but I'm not sure. I should research this more, but um, let's go ahead and remove this. Of course, I'm still very new to working on TVs. I don't know how everything works yet, but also there was a cable running from the TCOM board to the LED driver. I think that's just for syncing the... Uh, the backlight refresh rate with the panel or something. Again, I don't know for sure. I'll take there. Okay, let's put this put it over there. So these cables right here run directly to the panel. And actually I think these drive each side of the screen individually, so this would be the left side of the screen, this would be the right. And if you removed one of these while the TV was running, or before you turned it on and then turn on the TV, one side of the screen should be blank. So yeah, we remove these. These are those plastic connectors that we've seen before. They just lift up and the cable sides out. Let's take a closer look. Uh, these connectors right here. There's actually two little tabs on the side. I don't know if you can see those. But you just squeeze it in. And they just pull out. Again, you want to be very careful with these cables. Alrighty. Now, there's a little bit of tape on there or something, but the T-Con board is free. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull these cables off. We want to keep those. Alright, so I've removed most of the cables from the back of the TV. There's not much left, but we still have... Let's see. Still have the speakers and this little button board. So let's uh, pop that out. I think there's just a tab on the bottom. Yep, that was easier than I thought. The speakers on this TV, they are just sitting on these little rubber mounts, and it should just lift right off. All the screws have already been taken out. There we go. Boom. Speaker number one. Speaker number two. All right, so there's one more thing we want to take a look at before we pull this panel apart, and that is the sticker right here that has the panel model number. So what a lot of TV manufacturers do is use the same panel, well, as other manufacturers, I guess. So like, even though this is a Sony TV, and you can see right there the model number, it's using an LG panel. And if you look at some of the components, like, let's see the T-Con board here. 
it says LG display. And if we get the LED driver, somewhere on here, yep, right there, LG display. And so what I assume is happening is manufacturers buy, this is sort of a kit, you get the panel, the backlight, the TCOM board, and the LED driver, because the power supply and the main board are both branded Sony. What this means is the TCON board and the LED driver could potentially be used on other TVs. So you want to make sure and record the panel number so that you know if it'll work on other TVs and not just this particular Sony TV. So make sure and record that and now we only have one more part left. As you can see, you just zoom out back of the TV. Looks pretty empty, there's nothing there. But, in this corner, there's one cable. And that runs to the LED backlight. And because the backlight on this TV is good, we definitely want to save that, because those fail very often in LED TVs. Well, let's start by just taking this panel out of the, um, the bezel. Should just lift out. Maybe I'll start around the corners here. Yeah, there we go. Sounds like a bunch of plastic tabs. And this thing is surprisingly heavy. Well, there's all the screws I didn't put up. I don't think we need them anyway. Yeah, they're plastic tabs. You can see some like right here. Those run all the way around the edge of the TV. So I'm just gonna pop those off. And the panel is free. Mostly. Maybe not. There we go. I realize that this is kind of hard to see. I can see the camera screen right now, and uh, none of this is in shot, but this thing is so big it's really hard to film. So I'm going to set that bezel aside. And here we have the panel. Move all these screws first. Okay, let's set this down. So along the edge of the screen, and again this will be different on pretty much every TV, you can see these little screws going all the way around. So I'm going to take those off and see if I can pop off this bezel and just take the screen apart from the front. Alright, so I've removed all the screws around the edge of the TV. There were a lot of them, and some of them were hidden behind little foam pads, so if you're doing this yourself, I recommend just looking everywhere and then double checking, because I did miss a few. This is actually my, my third shot. But now, this frame is coming up. Oh, there we go. Right off. So let me set that aside. And we can actually lift up the panel. I just ripped right through that tab. Good thing the screen's cracked. Now, we don't actually have to be that careful. But if I was doing like a backlight replacement and I needed to save the TV, obviously I would not be treating it. Where I am right now. Okay. But there's another layer here. See these little plastic pieces? Looks like those are going to have to come off. Okay, with that off, you can take off the individual layers. And if you want, you might be able to save these. I'm sure they could be useful in some project. Oh, bingo. But like I said, this is not going back together, so. 
care about all this. So there it is. There's our backlight. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so here is the backlight. We just have a strip of LEDs running along the edge of this TV. Up against this metal heat sink. Looks like we can remove it just by taking out all these little screws. Oh, man, they're in there pretty good. So I'm going to take these out real quick. And there we go. Actually, I gotta be careful, there's a little cable over here. Uh, there we go. Anyway, here's the backlight. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this completely and set it aside. So now that I have all the parts removed, I went ahead and put the TV back together. Just the uh, panel, the bare LCD panel and the plastic housing. That way it's a little easier to transport. I'm going to have to find some place to have it recycled or who knows. I'll do some research on how to dispose of that properly later. But you can see all the parts we got from this TV. So just going over the thing once more. We have the stand, power supply, LED driver, main board, T-con board, the backlight speakers, and then just a whole bunch of cables. And I did a little research on eBay about pricing. It seems like these T-Con boards for this TV go for around $15. These main boards, the prices are all over the place. I saw one that sold recently for $100, but most of them are around $50. Same with the power supply, $50 to $60. LED driver, I think $20? I don't know, that one was a lot cheaper. But, um... I'm going to do a little more research on pricing. I'll probably undercut everyone else if I can because I really don't want to have to store these for too long. But yeah, so like I said in the beginning, I found this TV on the side of the road for free and uh, I was able to salvage all these parts from it. Hopefully I can get these on eBay soon and uh, maybe make some money from it. But yeah, so if you have a broken LCD TV, cracked screen, you might as well take as many parts as you can before you throw it out because you might be able to make a little bit a little bit of money reselling those but anyway thanks for watching this video um, I know it's been a long time since I last made a YouTube video I think it's been like two years but uh, I don't know I stopped because I really wasn't proud of the quality of my old videos not that this one's much better but um, if you have any feedback or anything, please leave it in the comments. I'm trying to improve my quality, my video quality. But, um, yeah, thanks for watching.